Welcome to the Root Cause Revolution podcast with functional and integrative nurse nutritionist and energy medicine practitioner, Audrey Christie. Hey friends, welcome to episode 259 of the Root Cause Revolution podcast. I have a question for you. Do you wake up between 2 and 4 a.m.? And are you up for 20 minutes to two hours? (laughs) If this is you, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it today. If this is your first time listening, I'm your host, Audrey. I'm a root cause clinician specializing in helping you to stop masking symptoms and start healing from those issues that just won't go away, those chronic illnesses, those autoimmune diseases. I tend to work with people who have tried it all and still aren't at the level of health and wellness that they desire and deserve. So we work together using a non-traditional approach that includes functional and integrative nutrition, functional wellness, naturopathy, and energy medicine. I specialize in helping you to start your own root cause revolution so that you can rebalance your body and heal for good. So if you're done with band-aids and you're ready for real solutions, you are in the right place. All right, let's talk about sleep. Now we have lots of episodes on sleep. This one though, we're going to focus on those of you that are still waking up between two and 4 a.m. Now I'm not talking about like getting up to pee and getting back in bed and falling right back to sleep. I'm talking about waking up during those hours, having, you know, you're, you're somebody who falls asleep relatively easily, but you wake up during those hours and you might be up for 20 minutes or you might be staring at the ceiling for two hours. You might eventually give up and just get up for the day. This episode is for you. Now we have talked about all the things in past episodes on how to set up a good nighttime, a good evening routine, if you will, um, and what to do if you're having these problems in the short term. So you know already that setting up a good sleep hygiene routine, calming, quiet activities, no full spectrum light one to two hours before bed. That includes any handheld devices. You're already avoiding caffeine sources after 2 p.m., even green tea. Um, You are making sure that your bedroom is not too hot and not too cold. Usually that's going to be around 68 degrees. Uh, and you are having a quiet digestion. So no heavy meals at within two to three hours before bedtime. But what if this doesn't work? What if this doesn't keep you asleep? What if you are, uh, you know, kind of ready for the next step? If those things don't work, then the next step is to work on energy and drainage, right? That's our first step of any healing journey is to make sure that our organs are detoxing well enough. Part of that energy and drainage is a lot of liver work. So when you're waking up between 2 and 4 a.m., those are liver times of day, if you will. Those are the times of day when you, uh, when that liver energy uh, is most active. So there's obviously, if you're still waking up, some energetic work to clear around that. But on the physical side of things, if you are still waking up between 2 and 4 a.m. after you fixed your sleep hygiene, after you have worked on your energy and drainage, then guess what it is, friends? <laughs> it's going to generally be a cortisol uh, adrenaline imbalance. Okay. So we know that one of cortisol's main jobs is to regulate blood sugar, but it is also very active in people who are under a lot of stress, physical stress or emotional stress. So when we are asleep, usually that's the longest that you go without eating, right? All through the night, eight to 12 hours at night, cortisol should be sloping up. So it should start low and it should get higher and higher and higher over the morning hours. And then peak first thing in the morning, when you wake up, that cortisol is like your is like your internal alarm clock. Now, if you were under a lot of stress, again, physical or mental stress, and what do I mean by physical stress? If you are getting up every single morning and doing a fasted five mile run, that's physical stress. If you're getting up one morning a week and you're going to CrossFit, that is physical stress. If you are doing hot yoga, that is physical stress. Uh, And physical stress is a different level for everyone. So for some people going on a mile walk might be physical stress. Um, But physical stress is physically, often intentionally, um, stressing your body in order to improve it, which there are thresholds for different people. So that's why I keep saying physical or mental stress. So if you're under stress, again, physical or mental, that cortisol rhythm, that, that peak, that gentle slope 
can become flat, right? It kind of blunts it. Stress blunts that cortisol. Um, and then your body being the great compensator it is, it's really kind of miraculous. It is miraculous how it works. It starts a secondary or a compensatory mechanism. So in the middle of the night between two and 4 a.m., instead of a cortisol release, right? Remember, we just said that that release, that gentle sloped to the peak is blunted. It's more like a, a small hill now, or maybe it's completely flat depending on how long the stress has been going. But what happens instead is your body goes, oh, shoot, we don't have enough cortisol to get us up. Let's release some adrenaline. And adrenaline works a lot like cortisol, but is also a central nervous system stimulant. So if that's happening, you're waking up in the middle of the night, you've already done all the liver cleansing work and you're still waking up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do this. Or, oh my gosh, I've got these six things to do tomorrow. How am I going to fit it all in? Or, oh my gosh, you know, you start stressing over all these different things and your mind's running a million miles a minute. That is a sure sign that adrenaline is being released. It is stimulating your central nervous system, making it very difficult, almost impossible to go back to bed. So what are we going to do instead? Let's talk about it. Now, again, this is assuming that you have done all the work up until now. You have a really good, really solid sleep hygiene routine. You are done with energy and drainage, and you know that your energy and drainage systems are working well. Depending on what other symptoms you might have, you might need something like a minerals and metals hair test, which you can listen to on the last episode about kind of the benefits of those and what we can find out. And then the next thing you're going to try is having a small snack at bedtime and a small snack first thing in the morning. Now, this needs to be relatively high in nutrients, so, and it also needs to be a whole food. It needs to have protein and fat in it. Okay. So my favorite thing for this is dates cut in half with a little bit of almond butter inside and a little bit of Himalayan salt sprinkled on the top. It hits all of those buttons. You can do two to four dates or two dates, which gives you four pieces. Um, or you could even do four baits, four dates. I would start out with less instead of more. That's what you're going to have at night. First thing in the morning, before you have your coffee, before you do your workout, you're also going to have something that is higher in protein and have a, has a little bit of fat as well as a little bit of carbohydrates in it. Okay. Now carbohydrates can serve to blunt adrenaline and blunt cortisol. So a banana with peanut butter works really well. Um, a protein shake can work well. Uh, you know, if that's easier for you to do for your schedule, but you're going to do that before you have your coffee. Now, these things won't fix it overnight. If you want to fix it overnight, you can, you really can't, you can band-aid it with some supplementation that will get you sleeping through the night. But in order to really fix it, you have to retrain that cortisol and adrenaline release. Start with the meals and then secondarily, in order to fix it for good, we have to work on that stress mitigation. Stress is such a nasty booger and we can do that with a lot of different things. It could be a particular type of movement can help you with stress. It can be meditation. It can be heart coherence. It can be any number of tools that we can use to bring your stress back into balance. And stress is a little bit different for everyone. So it's not a matter of changing your entire life to avoid stress because we really can't do that. It's about giving your body, your mind, your energy, the tools to mitigate stress in a way that it doesn't impact your sleep. All right, that was a lot of information for y'all. I hope that if you are still waking up between 2 and 4 a.m. and you have done all the things for your energy and drainage, that you will take heed to this information, that you will... It will land in the right way that you understand that stress is at the root cause of this. Um, and I've given you some tools that you can get to work on that right away. As always, friends, I am rooting for you. See you next time. Thank you for listening to the Root Cause Revolution podcast. Be sure and subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Ratings and reviews are always appreciated. <laughs>